Hello, welcome to Heartland. Welcome to the Hotline on RGR 94 FM. Welcome to Hotline Interface on JNN. I'm your host, Emily Shields. Welcome to those joining on RGR94FM.com. Thank you for joining me on Jamaica News Network. We're live with you. Great having you. And for those joining from your cell phones from the US, UK, Canada, wherever in the world you are, this is Hotline. Emily's views, her position on the issues, her point of view backed up by the facts. Here are Emily's views. Right. Where are we now? In the newspaper this morning on the front page of the Observer is a picture of a tragedy in Moko. Another murder, suicide, and serious injury to members of a family. This has rocked this very rural community in Clarendon. Now, these reports are similar to ones that we have had before. We understand that there were frequent quarrels or disagreements between the perpetrator who has committed suicide and the lady who is now suffering from serious injuries to her body. And a 16-year-old, very promising young man by all accounts has been killed. This murder-suicide comes in the face of reports of drops in murders, and really because of the states of emergency and the zones of special operations, of special operation rather, across parts of Jamaica. So there are some crimes that, irrespective of what is going on, it is going to be very difficult for the police and members of the security forces to stop. Rural folk, I think you need to be told, whilst you can hear, that it is not every relationship that is going to last. We have to be taught how to walk away and to find happiness elsewhere without resorting to violence. And a key road to getting rural folk to understanding that is going to be through a process of education over time. When you expand your educational opportunities, I think the scope for finding partners would also increase. The ability to talk through rather than fight out conflicts would also be increased. And this is very sad for this entire family and the community of Moko, rocked by this murder suicide, something that is becoming too common right across Jamaica. There's another matter that I've been watching, this report coming yesterday, fear of Chinese investment in Jamaica, fear of Chinese takeover of Jamaican assets if government were to default on these loans. You know, people to whom Segments of the population look for guidance on some matters. We have to be very careful about what we say and how we say what we say. So with the report yesterday of a fear of Chinese takeover of businesses should government default on loans from China, it's one of those things, frankly, when I heard it, I thought, huh? Because absent from the report was a proper substratum of facts that could even warrant anyone coming to such a conclusion. We have since been told in relation to this reported fear of Chinese takeover of assets that Chinese investment in Jamaica as a portion of the overall debt is about 3 and at most 4%. 3 or 4%. So where the, the perception is that somehow all 
of the major investment in Jamaica or the major loans to government are coming from Chinese. In actual percent, it is proving not to be the case. Additionally, we must always remember that Jamaica has had a history of repayment of its loan and that this is part of a bipartisan agreement. So whichever government is in power, the opposition is equally committed to repayment of debt as a first call out of revenue. We don't really default. So we have to be very careful of the fears that we spread unintentionally. And the Chinese seem to be easy prey for rumors all over the world. Let us have the conversation about Jamaican private sector involvement in loans to government or in major construction or infrastructure projects. And let us see what are the obstacles to more Jamaican private sector involvement in these projects and remove those obstacles. Because I think there's room for all without unnecessarily pointing fingers at Chinese and their relationship with Jamaica without more. I'm certainly heartened to hear that the Jamaican private sector now want to be part of the investment pool for projects in Jamaica because we have lived through a time when private sector was investing for the most part in government paper, cutting out the appetite for investment and reaping the big rewards when repayment time comes around. So let us revisit why it is that we're not having more investments and make the environment conducive to Jamaican private sector injection of capital in government, either infrastructural projects through public-private partnership agreement or through loans. I've said to you before on this program, I'm extremely worried about what is happening in the world. And the part of the world about which I'm extremely worried at this time is the United States of America. We've always looked to the United States to sort of be the moral compass on some matters, even if it's not doing most things right. It was always in the habit of saying most things in a way that people would want to emulate and congratulate the stance that they have taken. Not all things, most things. So there is now a 150-year-old principle in the U.S., which says that anyone born on U.S. soil is an American citizen. And that principle has been called birthright citizenship. Now, in the era of new politics, the politics of fear, the politics of racism, the politics of win at all cost, and days before the midterm elections in the United States, crucial elections they are, President John Donald Trump says he plans to end birthright citizenship in the U.S. by an executive order. The president claimed that such an order is now in the works. So somebody somewhere is drafting this executive order for his signature according to him. And not long after he made those sentiments in an interview, we saw the South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, this is the same senator who led the assault against Democratic senators, whom he claimed tarnished the good name of then Judge Brett Kavanaugh, who is now Justice Brett Kavanaugh, Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, I plan to introduce legislation along the same lines as proposed executive order from President Donald Trump. Jamaica, this is, as I said, a new era in the United States in which all things previously thought impossible can and will happen. Even though 
a lot of legal minds have said, a move of this nature can only come through constitutional amendment. The president is of the view, through his legal advisors, that an executive order can do it. We witnessed only a few days ago an unprecedented massacre of Jews. We saw the sending of bombs to previous presidents and those who have outrightly opposed Donald Trump. We do not know what next can and will happen. I know there are a lot of Jamaicans who have gone to the United States and who have had children and who have this birthright citizenship. What I want to encourage you to do is to aggressively monitor the developments in the United States. So if you have anyone who is born there, and particularly if none of the parents of that person is American, you may want to consider your options at this time. Because what I think will happen is that Donald Trump may sign an executive order. He may issue directives to the immigration authorities right across the border so that if you are in Jamaica with your Jamaican pass, your US passport, intending to go to the country of which you are a citizen, you may be told on the border that you cannot enter. And if you enter, you may be told that you cannot, if you leave rather, you may be told that you cannot re-enter. And you may become part of a group of recognizable individuals who will have to seek legal advice and counsel to make representation for you to the Supreme Court of the United States to challenge the constitutionality of this executive order. I do not know how it is going to play because when a president has insisted on getting his pick on the Supreme Court, irrespective of whatever information there might be, and where he has so far picked two individuals whose views on these matters, we are not sure how they will weigh in light of the law that is now existing. We stand a very, very strong chance that a precedent of over 150 years, which interpreted this 14th Amendment, which gave all persons born in the United States, even those to parents who are not Americans, would get automatic American citizenship. They may find a way to distinguish that 150-year-old Supreme Court precedent and knock it down. All of this coming with days to an election where the core, the base of Donald Trump is always very frantic about matters touching and concerning immigration. And he knows the stakes are high. So that if he were to lose the House, for example, then the Democrats could call for investigation into all different kinds of things that previous to now, we have had very little information about. I urge you to keep watching and to, whilst you watch, recognize the importance of building institutions in your own country, Jamaica, so that irrespective of who our prime minister is, he cannot run his own thinking, his own doctrine across all the fabric of the Jamaican society without the institutions keeping, keeping him or her in check. Those are my views on the hotline. Join us next time for Emily's Views on the Hotline. We're back with you. Thank you for rejoining us on Hotline and Hotline Interface. So in today's program, Jamaica's tourism sector has been left with a difficult task of trying to recover from serious damage being done to its reputation following an investigative story published in the international media which outlined incidents of sexual assault, on several United States tourists at some of the country's resorts. According to the State Department statistics, the report says that 
78 U.S. citizens were raped in Jamaica between 2011 and 17. The article has been making the rounds on various social media and traditional platforms since Tuesday. The U.S. State Department um, has issued several travel advisories to um, you know, warn people that sexual assaults occur frequently in Jamaica, even in all-inclusive resorts. In the meantime, there's an outpouring of views on the next steps that Jamaica should take in order to hold off a potential fallout in the tourism industry following this report highlighting the sexual assault of U.S. citizens at local resorts. I'm joined now to hear a little bit more about it by the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce president on the telephone, Mr. Winston Lawson. Mr. Lawson, welcome to Hotline Interface and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, good morning, Emily. Thanks welcome. Good, me. good to have you, Mr. Lawson. Morning to your listeners as well. Right. So yeah. the article highlights some specific incidents. I don't know if since the report has come out, Mr. Lawson, you've had the chance of speaking with the industry players and to see whether the specific incidents highlighted by the article if you have been able to confirm that they happened at any of our resorts. A mentally handicapped woman in her 20s, an Indiana mother gang raped by three Cuban soccer in a resort bathroom stall. Do you know of any of those? Anybody said to you that they know of those? Um, no, Emily. I, I certainly can't confirm the specifics right. of it. But, um, but, but we, we looked at the report um, and quite understandably, it, 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 is, it is concerning to us as a chamber here in Montego Bay. You, you know, tourism is, is, yes. is our bread and butter here. T tell me the um, relationship between the Chamber of Commerce and the Jamaica mm -hmm. Hotel and Tourist Association. Well, we are both pretty much a sort of, you know, lobbyist group, an umbrella group. Um, but the Chamber is a little bit more wider mm -hmm. because we go across industries. Mm -hmm. However, the, 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 the JHDA more focuses on the, on the, the hotel sector, the, the, the tourism sector. Right. 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 So one of the reports we know about for sure, Mr. Lawson, because it mm -hmm. made the news, mm -hmm. would have been the two Detroit mothers raped at gunpoint in their room. <laughs> this is the Rio Hotel incident, I think, where mm -hmm. this young man is now, has been charged with several... Um, counts of, of, of various crimes. So we know at least one of them has made national news in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let, me, let, 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 let me see. Look, rape, rape anywhere and rape of, of, of anyone um, evokes, certainly for us, evokes massive upset and certainly, you know, that great desire to see that, that justice mm -hmm. prevails. Um, as you said, the long arm of the law is, is meted out the perpetrators. Okay? Yes. Um, the, the chamber, like the Ministry of Tourism, um, certainly condemns these acts and, and any and every incident of rape. We condemn it. Um, rape, you know, Emily, is, is one of those crimes that, that you really can't undo it. You know, it, it's almost like murder. Mm -hmm. it, it's done, it's done. It's a dastardly act. Mm -hmm. I would tell you that I am, well, we are, I should say, as a chamber, we are encouraged um, that the ministry has, has actually not postured to deny the allegations, but it has, it has reasonably confirmed that there will be probes, whether the recent ones or the historical ones will be probed, mm -hmm. and justice, um, the intention is that justice will be served for the victims. Right, but no, you do, you, do you get the impression, mm -hmm. though, that the overall concern at the moment is not so much mm -hmm. justice, but the potential negative impact on the industry? Well, this, 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 this obviously has to be a concern, and so a part of the, the result has to be that these allegations will have its hearing, its proper hearing, through the courts. And so this is one of the reasons why, at this point in in, in in, in at all this stage mm. of it, we we can't we can't say or verify 
that these allegations actually are true or they are not. There is a process. And so, I, again, I was encouraged that we have not denied it. We have not confirmed what we have confirmed, that these allegations will go through the process mm -hmm. uh, to determine, you know, that justice can be served. Right. For the victims, it is important. Yeah. It's important to understand that victims of these allegations can be the accuser or the accused, depending on the outcome of the court. So, so let us understand that as well. Right? True. And I tell you, I tell you, I'm also encouraged, Emily, that um, it's not, I don't think this thing is beyond us to cauterize or to repair. Mm -hmm. First step is to ensure that it goes through the process. Right. Let me, let me ask you as we talk about mm -hmm. the process so many times, Mr. Yeah. Lawson. Mm -hmm. Do you know from the position of JHTA and from the various resorts in Jamaica, mm -hmm. what are their policies, if any, for any sexual or physical assault that takes place on the resort property? What do they advise the guests to do yeah. immediately? Um, I can't. I can't speak um, with any assurance on that, Emily. What What I, as a chamber, would would implore is that uh, the hotel sector uses this opportunity to to relook certainly at the recruitment policies and procedures, um, ensuring that they are detailed enough mm -hmm. um, to look as mm -hmm. well at. Their, their training, mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of code of ethics and so on. And that right. the training, they are refresher courses um, quarterly because, you know, human beings, Emily, they say something today, they forget it next week. So it's important that this sort of training, you will have some sort of refresher so that it stays current in the minds of the employees. Right. Because of the, you know, the, the, the horrendous um, yeah. possibility. So but I, I can't speak with any assurance or, or yes, because I I'd like to know what that what that process is, yeah, and yeah. I I you, I know yeah. some people find it hard to believe these numbers, but if you look at what goes on in the general population, they are perhaps comparable with what goes on and what is probably unreported as well in Jamaica Maybe about this particular type of crime. I I can't speak to that either, Emily. I heard it repeated this morning. Um, raising some issue regarding the number of 78. Um, it certainly is not reflective in the, in, the, in the court matters that come up. Yeah. Um, as she understands it, it's significantly lower. Yeah. But remember, you're talking about allegations versus what is tried. Um, so, right. so, so I, I can't, I can't yes. say. But even as we speak about it, I think it's also important because you have a situation where 78 over seven years, and you're, you're, you're looking at, at, at 20, over 20 million visitors. 78 is too much. One incident is too much. We admit that. But I don't think it is reasonable to give any impression that there is a chronic raping problem in the Jamaican tourism sector. I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. Again, the, 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 the numbers that we are seeing of allegations is well within our capacity to address. I don't believe there is any chronic issue here. Within right. our means yes. to, to address it and to carry through the process. But the other if thing, is, the other thing Mr. Lawson, Emily, is mm -hmm. you, we have to consider whether it needs to be chronic to dissuade people from coming. If I'm going to Jerusalem yeah. and I hear that one tourist per month is raped there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to be one of the tourists that's a potential target. Well, Do I, would I want to go there? Yes. Well, 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 certainly not. I mean, we, 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 we have to, to appreciate as well, I mean, that we, we, we have to look at. There, there, there are risks in everything. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the fact of the matter is that crime against tourists, I heard Omar yesterday speaking, that the crime against tourists are, are you know, almost negligible in terms of the, the statistics. Um, but, but there is still that 1% or there is still that 0.5%. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it is important.
important that there is no such message being bandied about about our tourism sector having mm -hmm. a chronic raping problem mm -hmm. and giving the impression that it is outside of our means and ability mm -hmm. to address it. Right. And that's the concern that I do have. As right. I said, rape is, a, is an abominable act and guilty parties should face justice. Right. L let me ask you as well if, is, if a, a part of the discussion you've been having relates to the security of the guests at these resorts. Do we have um, foot patrol? Do we have 24-hour CCTV camera in the public spaces so that if anything happens, then the chances of the perpetrator being caught, those chances are increased, particularly on resort property. Have you had those reports from the members of the Hotel oh, Tourist Association? I, I would prefer that that is addressed um, certainly by the, the GHTA. Right. Um, we could probably speak more definitively on that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, if I was to hazard a guess, um, you know, based on the, the, these results, um, I would think that they would have put in, um, you know, those sort of measures. If they have not, then certainly, again, to, to take this opportunity to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to assist in, in, in helping us to rid of Right. of this sort of unwelcome stigma right. that, that seemingly is, is, right. is trying to... So, so, so far, what we've heard from Mr. Robinson, Omar Robinson, is there have yeah. been concerns expressed by potential visitors, but there have been no cancellations. Well, yeah? that's good. Well, that's good. Right. Um, yeah. From yeah. your... The, the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. your businesses, let's say in St. James in particular, they get visits from the tourists who come to the hotel and they buy souvenirs and so forth at the shops. So it could directly impact your members as well if there's a drop in the tourism yeah. numbers, yeah? Uh, yeah? But of course, as I said, tourism is our, is our bread and butter. Not just the fact that the hotels are here, but there's a lot of linkages and spin you know, yes. you know, that, that we benefit from. It's a little bit early, Emily. I haven't heard any, yeah. any sort of, of, of issues of any backlash as yet, but we are all concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as I said, it's not beyond us to, to, to quickly address. Um, I would even go further to say, look, if there are issues um, in terms of our capacity, to talk or wherever, to, to, to expedite these processing, then I think that the Ministry of Tourism has an interest mm -hmm. in, in making whatever resources available, yeah. even in that area, to ensure that we rid ourselves of this unwelcome Right. Well, we'll watch, we'll monitor um, the discussions, the outcomes over the next couple of weeks and months and see how it yeah. goes. Thank you for talking with me, Mr. Lawson. My pleasure. Thank you as well, Emily. All the best to you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's okay. Winston Lawson from the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce talking to me about this report in the papers. I've, I've heard people, the first stop is to, to dismiss to dismiss the reports because if somehow our police don't have a report of it, then it is said to be inaccurate. And I actually think that's a, an improper position from which to start, right? Firstly, I don't know whether the police have a means, some means now of instantly checking a system for St. James in particular, and say we've had X number of reports from um, the resorts in St. James. Two reports have come from this particular hotel, one from this one. I don't know. I don't even know if the hotels themselves keep a log of any reports that may come to them. And the reports having come to them, they may say, we need to report this to the police. How many people up not to make a report to the police and to say, you know what, I just want to leave this country right now and go back to where I'm coming from. So I think this to, to, to firstly pour cold water on the numbers is really not a good place to start because we know from right here in Jamaica, at least in the last three, four weeks, two tourists have been raped at a hotel in um, one of our parishes, by a man who is now being charged. Well, they say they were raped and some gun was brought into play. We know that. And two would be 
more than enough. I'm not even concerned about the numbers. It's the fact that this is happening, not only to visitors. Our young women, it happens to a young woman every day. If we rape our own, why you think somehow there will be penile um, shamefulness in raping strangers? There will be none. So we must start at a better place. I'd love to hear from the police the numbers that you have, if any. And even if you don't have the numbers, should we interpret it to mean that it has not happened? No. I know of at least one instance, upscale resort, where a woman was raped. She didn't want to make any report to the police because she didn't want to sit for two, three hours to retell the story. She just wanted to leave and to make a report in her country of origin. Let me take a break. When I come back, I'll take your calls on Hotline Interview. <music> Thank you. Welcome back to Hotline and Hotline Interface on JNN. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to take some of your calls now on 876-926-2178, and 1-888-991-2080. A lot has been happening. Um, your thoughts. Um, this report coming in international media. They said, as I was telling Mr. Lawson, the victims include a mentally handicapped woman in her 20s, an Indian mother gang raped by three Cuban soccer players in a resort bathroom stall, a 20-year-old woman raped by two men in her hotel room, two Detroit mothers raped at gunpoint, in their room and a Kent County teenager and her 21 year old friend gang raped by lifeguards in a locked laundry room at the resort where they were staying. Those are specific incidents that have been quoted. Um, and I suppose we don't know of independent verification, but the fact that there is some degree of specificity, um, is it something we, we accept? or something we still want more details on. We have a caller there online on Hotline Interface. Morning, Mr. Shields. How are you? Not too bad. You? I'm all right. I'm a man from Ontario. Man from? Ontario. Ontario. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Shields, I've been getting calls from Calgary, BC, all over the place, because we come down at least twice a year, and they keep hearing this report about the rape issues, too. And uh, one in particular, a friend of mine in BC, she said, Yes, the staff, they can be aggressive and they don't really understand. Some of it, you may, you may have rape, but most of it is sexual harassment. Yes. Because a lot of these um, females, they go down and they, they are flirtatious. Um, they are flirtatious. They're what? Flirt, flirt, um, flirtatious. Yeah. The lead you on. And uh, I don't think Jamaican men in general understand when to back off. Leave it alone. They let say no and it's no. Mm -hmm. And just by touching, that's sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You see, and yes. I, I, I don't know about the rape. Even if this friend from BC, she's saying that she's not too sure about the rape, but she knows sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's very, very terrible. Right. And, 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 and I, I, I can totally relate to that man from Ontario. I think a lot of Jamaican men, the moment they see a woman in swimsuit Palm Beach, mm -hmm. you're having a little alcohol, and you feel iry, mm -hmm. it is some kind of invitation, which brings me to this thing now where I think the hotel policy God. has to be so clear God. on the relationship between the employee and the guests. This is exactly what she was saying. She yes. was saying, do they um, teach them how to, 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 um, to deal with the guests? You know, the male in general. Mm -hmm. Because she, she told me, Yesterday, that there was a security who was calling, was bothering her, but she wouldn't tell me because I, I go a bit crazy because Mrs. Schiff, every year I come down with at least 16, 17 of these because I work all over Canada, so I meet people. And I, got, I was there in September. I was there in January. I'm coming back down in December. And they're asking, is it safe? Yeah, and these are Canadians? Canadians, Canadians. Yes. 
Canadians. You see, and they, they, they're there because, okay, I'm going to tell you this, Mr. Shields. We used to go to Mexico. We used to go to Mexico once a year, Jamaica once a year. And they started some killing in Mexico. We we're in the kill a couple of Canadians. We quit going to Mexico. Now, if the rape thing starts in Jamaica, that's the same thing that's going to happen in mm -hmm. Jamaica. They're going to stop going to come to Jamaica. And Mr. Shields, they should look into this. Believe me. Mm -hmm. I, I think, for instance, yesterday I heard some people um, with Dr. Taylor. And they're taking this thing lightly. Even no. um, this consumer, this lady I had so much respect for. In a sense, she's saying that because the lady is dressed the way they are, then they're, they're entitled to be sexual arrest or touch. Who, like, Nobody could say that. I but swear. From, um, it, from Bishop Blair said that about 10 years ago, it cannot be repeated in this country. She said that yesterday, and I think that Dr. Taylor was so patient with her. She's a very, very articulate lady. Mm -hmm. She's with the consumers thing. I can't remember her name. That's Maisie Miller. No, not Maisie Miller. No? No, she's an ex-consumer. She works with the consumer ah. people. Okay, okay. Well, okay, I, I, I don't know. I'd have to listen because I wasn't no, listening. No, and, and, and I, 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 want, I tried getting to them yesterday because I mm. wanted to be a piece of my mind. Mrs. Shields, you know that here in my workplace, if I, I can say to a female, good morning, I can't look at her and say you're wearing a nice dress like sexual harassment. Yeah, I, I think that's a little bit over the top, but I know it is a society you live reason, in. When we, when we debated this, the reason for this is that, good morning, you go no further. You say you have a nice dress, you get the wrong impression. She said, thank you. Then you're going to go on to something else. Mm -hmm. So the, the three picks at the bottom before it goes further. And yes. they, they've, got, they've got to teach. The, the, yes. got, I, mean, I mean, people do still do it and get away with it. But if the female reports you, yes. to, 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 yeah, yes. you, you, you lose your job. Yes. I, I can totally happen. understand man from Ontario. I think the typical Jamaican man, particularly if you're passing construction site, or you're at a resort and whatever, they tend to go too far in what they too say far. and probably in what they do. Yeah? And, 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 and an act of kindness and whatever God. can be misinterpreted and who knows, it may not get as far as rape, but it is unwarranted sexual advance. Right, we, we, we went to a club in particular by the name of Jungle Negro. And you have people and... You're socializing, and they'll buy you a drink. And for the love of God, you get the drink. You're just all over the person. And they, 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 I, don't, I don't know. They don't know themselves, Mr. Shields. They don't yeah. know themselves. Yeah. Something will have to be done, though. Yes. Well, all right. I think the ministry is taking it very seriously. We should have it's had um, Delano C. right here, and I've been told he's been called away into a meeting mm -hmm. because they have to strategize to deal with concerns like yours. And I, I think if people could be outside of Jamaica when some of these things break, then they would better understand how it immediately impacts the psyche of people on the outside. I was um, in the UK when the first state of emergency was imposed in Jamaica. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, every grouping of individuals which I attended, the focal point of discussion was the presence of soldiers and police in the street. My goodness, there's a civil war in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. What is going on? I can't be going there at the moment. Good. So the impact is real, and you have to spend your time saying to them, it's actually safer now than it was when they were not on the streets. Yeah? So I get yeah. it. But thank you for the call. You're welcome, Mr. Shields. All the best to you. This is the hotline and hotline interface. Um, 926-2178. Hello. Hello, good morning, Mr. Shields. Yes, John, how are you? Well, I'm not doing bad, ma'am. Happy to hear that. But I am troubled also, and I'm also sad. You know, two things why I'm sad, ma'am. It is getting so sickening. And every time I turn on TV or the radio, some children gone missing. You know, it, 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 is, it, is, getting, it is getting to us now. It has drained me. You know, when... when, when I love father, ma'am. My children, them, I'm a big, a big people, them. But at the same time, um, I'm a big people, them, I take me. But the children, them, it is so, you know, it is, we see more mm -hmm. time, you know, it's, it, it's sad. It is. A number you of know. children murdered, raped and murdered since the start of this year. And, you know, I, I, I say it already. National day. emergency, John. What is it? What National is emergency. And that's why, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now, and this is a truth moment. You, I know a lot of people talk about this 
needs challenge and have various whatever about it. You see, if we continue approaching crime solving in this 12th century manner that we're doing in 21st century Jamaica. 12th century. It 12th century. <laughs> we will get absolutely nowhere. If we think we can be depending in this 21st century on eyewitness report yeah, and, and eyewitness report only in the absence of some serious forensic information on individuals in this country, we make a sad mistake. That, that is true. Uh, uh, yes? That, that is so true. Uh, so uh, oh, if you know what, stay there and play the politics, and then you call me and talk about children no, being no, no, raped no, 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 and murdered, no, 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 and don't no, no, see no, the no, link machine. with it. No, Michelle, Michelle, look here now. Oh. Even these machines, they are concerned. But let them not um, talk about because um, we really need a natural identification system. But the, the forensic um, department, the scientific department, the police force, that is where something is threatened. We need we have people, uh, machines, who, 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 can, who, who can look and, and um, can prevent crime from happening. They can't prevent it. Yes, um, there are some crimes they can't prevent, but the solution would be much easier. And again, machines, when criminals know that they, have, that they, will, be, that they will be caught, Yes. It will be a deterrent. No, you with a high degree of accuracy that when they are held, they are held because they have near irrefutable forensic data on them. Yeah? But look here. Let's talk again. I know you're going to call me back on Hotline, um, the full program. Thank you so much for joining me on Hotline Interface today. Thank you to my guest and to my callers, to the production team. We'll be back with you next week, same time, same place, on this. Join me and call me on Hotline for more. I'm Emily Shields. Take care.